Well, hey everyone. Today's video is inspired by my upcoming trip to Morocco. That's right, this October 2024, I'm going to be traveling to Morocco to host a watercolor retreat. The focus of the retreat will be painting from life with watercolors. There are still a few open spots as of this recording, so I'll leave a link in the description so you can check out more information about that. But today, we're gonna to be sketching and painting a camel, and he's all decked out. He's got this colorful halter with tassels on it, super Moroccan looking. And the way we're gonna approach the painting today is is as if we were painting from life. So I have a setup in front of me that's what I would normally bring on a plein air painting excursion or something like it. I have a variety of things that I like to bring, but today I'm gonna to show you this setup. So this is a Baohong watercolor journal. Baohong is a wonderful 100% cotton watercolor paper. I love to take watercolor journals with me when I travel. In fact, I can't imagine traveling without my watercolor supplies. For me, it's a way of just journaling and documenting what I'm seeing. And unlike any other form of documentation, photos or writing, my paintings are what bring me back exactly to that spot, what I smelled, what I saw, everything that I heard, it all just comes right back. So to me, it's the most amazing way to just record your vacation. All right, along with my watercolor journal, I have some paper towel. I have my A Gallo set of 12 half pans. And I love taking metal sets with me when I paint because they're so much easier to travel with. They're just small and compact. I always just take pan paints when I travel. And these, you can't ever have too many of these. These little clips with the magnet in them are amazing. I like to just clip them to my journal like that. Not only does it help keep the papers down, but you can also attach your palette to your magnet and that just keeps it stable for you so it's not gonna slide off your paper. And then I always carry a spray bottle with water. I use that both to fill my water jar and to spray my paints. You could also take something like this. This is a Faber-Castell collapsible water cup. These are super lightweight. I like to use the metal ones again because they're magnetic. This one has a little clip on it so you can easily attach it to your palette. Inside my palette, I have a silver black velvet travel bullet brush. This one's a size four. I like to use a bigger brush too, so I have a Da Vinci Colineo size 12 round brush and a pencil. And that's pretty much all you need. Now, normally painting on location, I would be at a table or I would have my standing easel or I'd be holding it in my lap. There's any number of ways that you can do this. With a camel, of course, you're probably not gonna get a really detailed sketch and painting of a camel because it's a living, breathing, moving being. And unless it's holding super still for you, it might be really hard to paint from life. So this might be something that you actually just snap some photos and take home. But either way, we're gonna approach it from that kind of spontaneous, this is what I'm seeing and sketching as fast as I can kind of approach. So let's get started. All right, when I'm sketching something from life, I like to start with the overall shape of the thing that I'm sketching. You may wanna leave some room on your paper for some notes and swatches, whatever you wanna do. I'm actually going to, yeah, leave a little room on the left here so that there's just some space for me to make some notes if I wanna do that. Often when I'm traveling, it's nice to save some space for putting the date, the location, and it'll just bring you right back to that spot. So I'm just starting with the overall shape of the camel's head. And in the reference photo, we've got these big tassels coming down and don't do any details yet. You wanna just start with a really light sketch that's just not fully committed to anything just yet. But remember that without a solid sketch, it's not a good idea to just jump into the painting. You wanna make sure you have your proportions correct first. I'm really familiar with horse anatomy. So when it comes to a camel, which is kind of similar, but just different enough that it's tricky. I, I find myself wanting to make the shape of the snout <laughs> the same as a horse. So I already made the muzzle a little bit too flat. It curves quite a bit, it's this Roman nose kind of, and the lips come way out. They extend a lot more than a horse's lips do. The lower lip is quite a bit underneath. So he's got an overbite, right? <laughs> And already that looks more like a camel than a horse, just that shape of the snout. So now that I've got the size and placement down, I'm gonna more fully commit to my lines and I'm gonna press a little harder than I normally would in my sketch, just because I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. The nose is really interesting. It's such a tiny little slit. And I believe that's to help protect it from getting a ton of sand blowing up in there. Amazing design, right? And it's all this fuzz around those lips. He's almost in a smile. I love the colorful tassels. I can already tell when we begin to paint those, we're gonna to need to be really careful to work in sections and to let each color dry before painting the next color. 
so that the colors don't all just blend together. And we're gonna try to simplify these. I'm gonna take out the chain. Remember, when you're working from life, it's a really good idea to just include the essentials, not just from life, when you're working from photos too. Just include the essentials and take out anything that you feel would improve the composition by being removed. And in this case, I think the chain, although it's kind of helping hold everything together, is something I wanna take out because it's cutting into those tassels. So I'm gonna to have to draw the tassels as if they weren't being cropped by the chain. All right, so I'm just adjusting my location of this tassel is looking at the negative shape here between the lower lip and the tassel. What shape does that make? And then bringing the halter all the way under the ear up here. And look at the distance between corner of the mouth and corner of the eye. And just sketch a really rough shape. We're notating where our darks are going to be, where our lights are going to be. And then I'm going to modify the shape of the skull once again, bringing the back of the head a little wider. Wasn't quite right. All right, now you might be looking at this halter and thinking, whoa, that is so much detail. What in the world am I gonna do with that? And I agree, it's so much detail, so we're not gonna do all those details. No need. What we'll do is just start by creating a line, kind of marking where the bottom of the yellow tassels all run, okay? And let's see, there are five of them inside of the head. So I'm gonna cluster these two front ones together first, and then draw the little circle shape where the tassels are tied. And then I'll take the next three. One, two, three. I'm actually starting with the circles on those. And I'm fattening out the tassels so they look like they're not being pressed in by the halter. Okay, so you can definitely change what you're seeing and make it a little bit more idealized. That's totally okay. So then you have these red pieces of yarn coming down, connecting the tassels to the side of the halter. And I'm gonna just try to simplify as much as I can. I'm gonna draw the horizontal line here where the halter cuts across the head. And then that little braid actually comes down on the right side like that. Okay, so then we've got red and then that connects to blue. Blue. And don't worry about making these perfect. It's really, really just important to get the essence of the thing that you're sketching and painting. So already you can tell that's a camel. It's wearing tassels on its head. They're not perfect tassels, but that's okay. What'll be important will be to get the, the fun colors and the light and the shadow shapes on your camel so that it defines the anatomy of the head correctly. We'll have a couple of the blue ones down here. And again, I'm just kind of overly simplifying just trying to get the idea across. And I think that's all we need to do for the sketch. If I was painting from life, I would have to keep it really simple and really quick. So for my water jar, I'm just gonna keep it here because I have the luxury of a desk. And I'm gonna take my spray bottle and pour some water into that. This is what I would do on location as well. And then I'll go ahead and spray my paints to activate them. I actually can't remember what all the paint names are. So you'll have to forgive me. We'll be calling them by warm red, cool red, and so on. I think that'll make it easier. And then you can match your own colors to what you're seeing here. So we're gonna wanna start with the tan on the camel. At least that's what I wanna start with. You could definitely start with whatever you want. I'm gonna take this, I think this is quinacridone gold. And I'm gonna mix in a little of this warm red. Ooh, a little went a long way. A little more quinacridone gold. Could even use um, some of the light burnt sienna here. Mixing in plenty of water. And I'm using my biggest brush right now. Mixing in some of that sepia too. So we're starting with a nice vibrant color here. And because I'm right-handed, I'm just gonna work left to right. Coloring in his face really quickly with a nice light wash. Stopping that color at the halter. And remember, when you're working on location, you have to work pretty fast. There's all kinds of elements that are changing. The weather is changing, the lighting is changing. And certainly if you're painting something from life like this, like a moving, breathing animal, it's gonna be changing positions and you're gonna to have to try to catch it in that same position over and over until you get a complete painting. And that's kind of tricky, but it's definitely doable. It just takes practice. All right, so I'm leaving little gaps where I wanna drop in some of that bright 
royal blue for the yarn in between. And this is just serving as a first coat of paint here. We can definitely layer. And if you're working outdoors, I imagine Morocco is a fairly dry climate. I don't know this for sure because I haven't been yet, but I imagine that it will dry pretty quickly. Definitely my paint dries really fast here where I live in Colorado, so I've had to learn to work fast. So I'm painting kind of all these in-betweens between the tassels, just a first layer of paint. And then it's nice that it's kind of segmented for us. We can work in little sections. And then I'll come up grabbing more paint and complete the head of our camel. You can paint around the eye for now. I like to save the eyes for last. Really helps bring it to life at the end. Now, if you want a nice soft edge for that fuzzy ear, if you have a second brush, this is your chance to create that soft edge. You can take some water. Mine's a little tinted already. And just create a wet spot outside of the area where you want your paint to flow. And then making sure you don't have too much water on your brush, paint right up to that wet spot. And your paint will flow into the wet area. And then I want the top of the head to be a little lighter. So I removed some of the paint from my brush and now I'm just swiping along that top of the head with that lighter value. So quick and dirty, that was our <laughs> really quick start. And now we'll begin the process of layering. If it's still wet, you can actually do some wet and wet techniques in here. If I control how much water is in my brush, I can get away with a little bit of wet and wet. Yeah. So I'm digging into my dark brown now and starting to add a dark shadow already on the underside of his head. And right here where that halter connects, we've got this metal bit right here. Just darkening there. I want to make sure we're showing a correct light and shadow on the head and it's also illuminating the anatomy of the animal so you know these are really important details i think i'm going to get the underside of the mouth and notice how i'm just pulling paint directly from my palette at this point because my surface is damp i need to work with damp or almost dry paint on my brush not wet no 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 if you have too much water on your brush it's just going to push aside the paint that's already there. Now I actually want to lift a little bit of color back out so I've just kind of dried my brush slightly. This color is somewhat staining so it's resisting lifting but if you can, you can get away with a little bit of lifting while it's still damp. And here you can see if you have a brush that's too dry, lifting is going to happen. I'm doing it intentionally right now but you may notice that that happens and you didn't intend to do it. Well, this is why. If your brush is really quite dry and you're pressing hard on the paper, you'll lift some color right back out. All right, I'm gonna dip into my warm blue. This is, I think, cobalt blue. I can't remember what's on my palette, but I'm gonna go ahead, oops, that's, mm. I'm gonna take a little red and mix that with it. So I have a royal purple, yes. And I'm gonna use that on the front of the lips here. So slowing down a little bit now, especially since it's begun to dry. And if I want a lighter value, I just dip in the water, remove some water on the paper towel so that it dries my brush slightly. We're using our techniques that we practice in the studio. And we just take those same techniques out of doors and have to work a little bit faster, that's all. Just makes it a bit more exciting. <laughs> Okay, now this area has dried enough that I can do some dry brush scraping. So I'm taking that purple that I mixed up and just scraping it across the snout. And that creates the look of stubbly fur there on the nose. And then I can take some more of my dark brown, paint the inside of the nostril and the underside of the nostril. Just reinforcing those dark shapes. So a little bit of my yellow is still left on my palette, so I can begin to layer some more color, adding some more three-dimensional shape to our camel's face. So on the underside of the head here, we see some mid-tones and some more interesting anatomical shapes, which of course are dictated by the shape of the skull beneath. And so we're beginning to paint those shapes in 
So I think that's pretty, pretty good for the muzzle. I don't want to do too much more on that. We have a lot still to do. And imagining if my camel is standing out there, you know, moving and breathing, he's not going to hold still. <laughs> okay, so I'm adding a second layer of that same quinacridone yellow burnt sienna mix to the head here and adding a little bit of water to lighten it up at the top of the head. Remember, top of the head is where the light is hitting, so that's gonna be the lightest spot on the camel's head. All right, and then I'm dipping in my dark brown and just swiping that over the ear here. If you wanna leave some little separations of hair, you can make it nice, looks nice and fuzzy. And where that brown touches your wet tan color should soften out The ear shape too, I tend to want to make it look like a horse, but it is different. It's a little shorter than a horse's ear. Definitely not the same shape. Hey, it's looking like a camel. So as we begin to add these layers and really darken it up, it's gonna to start to look much more real, if that's your goal. If you want it to look like an illustration, you know, just Use bigger, broader, more suggestive brush strokes. And don't worry about picking at the details. But even for illustration, you want there to be light and shadow. And you want to be sure about what you're doing. Don't overwork your paint. Don't linger too much on one particular area. And that's especially important when you're working from life. We can tend to fixate on one little spot. We're trying to get it just right. And then before you know it, the light has changed and everything's different. And you wonder if you should just scrap it and start over. So, you know, try to work all over as much as you can. And if you have certain areas of the painting that are a little bit unfinished, you know, I recommend them to be areas that are not the focal point. I've definitely had it where I was painting from life and I was fixating on the wrong thing. It wasn't the focal point, but I spent so much time trying to get this building in a background just right that I completely neglected the foreground, which was what I wanted my focus to be on. It was this woman painting in front of me and I wanted her to be the main focus of the painting. And then before I knew it, she had walked away, she was talking to friends and then, you know, my whole scene was completely gone. So that's why it's important to get the essentials down first. I'm gonna take that little mix of purple that I made earlier and just use that for the halter. It's kind of this dull pink. It looks like it's a bit dirty. Just painting this very directly on the dry paper and then I want it to get really light at the top so I remove most of the paint as I approach the top mm -hmm. and I'm actually gonna bring that up a little higher just so it looks like it has some shape all right it's time to do a first layer on those tassels and you might want to grab a smaller brush for this we're gonna use our bright warm yellow and start with the yellow first so what I'm gonna do is just paint some of the yellow yarn everywhere I see yellow Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it should look like a braid kind of. So space them fairly evenly. It looks like you have two that are side by side and then maybe one in the center and just kind of alternating between those patterns. And the yellow is gonna need some orange in it to help it look more shapely and dimensional. Right now, it's just way too bright and clean. And in the reference image, it's a lot more orangey than that. So we'll have to come back to it with another layer but we need to get started with it because I would say this is essential. So for the tassels, I'm just painting them in solid, thick yellow, and then there's these green ties, but you can just paint right over those too because what can you mix with yellow to make green? Blue, so we can layer blue over the top and that'll make those green ties. Have to think about what colors are gonna be affected if you paint them over the top of something. The colors that are underneath definitely influence what happens when you paint over the top. So that's why I want to paint the yellow kind of separately and make sure that it goes on nice and clean. I don't want to start with a light blue, for example, and then paint yellow over the top because then I'm going to get green. So I have to be very cautious about how I layer these things. And then I didn't paint this or I didn't draw the little braid coming down that side, but that's okay. We'll leave that one out. Notice how simplified these little shapes are. I'm not doing any little tassels yet, no little stringies or anything like that. While I have that brown still on my palette, I'm gonna add this tuft of fur here coming out of the back of his head. It's kind of right next to that yellow. If it touches the yellow, that's okay. 
While that yellow is still wet, this is a great chance to add your red to create more of an orange on the tassels. And the orange is gonna serve as a shadow tone, giving it some dimension, helping it look more like the colors that we're seeing too. I almost forgot about this one back here. I'm just gonna make that one orange straight away because it's in the shadow. Okay, so I'm working really quickly, just using some quick curved down strokes. And on some of these now, I'm letting my brush separate a little bit so it looks like the string, the tassels, individual string coming down, not so blocky and chunky anymore. And then you can take some of that red and add it to your little yellow braids here if you want to. If it feels like just way too much detail, don't worry about it. But with some of these, I want it to look a little thicker, chunkier, and it needs to have some shape to it. And to do that, it cannot just be a simple flat yellow. Same with these little ball shapes. You can add a shadow side with your orange, weaving one side in the highlight. Okay. And yeah, so you can see it's not exactly like what we're seeing in the photo. There's definitely been some modifications, but that's okay. It's definitely looking like a camel wearing a tassel. All right, I'm gonna wait till this is completely dry, but my next color is gonna be this blue. So for that, let's see what colors we have here. This one will be good. Okay, so I'm gonna use this really nice royal, I think this is ultramarine blue, and we'll just go ahead and paint the blue tassels next. And you can let your brush strokes just kind of disappear off the page a little bit, especially since it's a cropped image. And when you're working from life too, for sure, you don't want to try to include everything that you're seeing. It's tempting because there's so much visual stimulus and it's just amazing. And you just want to capture all of it, but let's face it, we can't. So we got to pick and choose. All right, so again, I'm just working really quickly using the broad side of my brush to get it all in as fast as I can. And then we've got one blue tassel back here. Having to continually grab more paint because these are pretty dark. So, you know, when you're working dark, you're gonna have to pick up thicker paint. You'll be amazed at how much paint you go through. Now to darken, you can mix that with that red that's on your palette, maybe a little bit of green. Just need to kind of make some dark version of what you're working with here and then add a shadow to each tassel. Again, on the left side, no, take note of what your light source is. Where is your light coming from? That's gonna be really important when you're working out in nature. What time of day will dictate where your light is. And in this case, the light is coming from up above and to the right. All right. So I'm gonna rinse that out, and I think my yellow is dry enough that I can go on to my next color. I'm gonna go with my warm red next, and this is going to kind of be between my yellows here, and then everything else that we paint on the bridle will be the blue. So, you know, make these big enough that they're prominent. Don't cover up your yellows. And notice how I'm just not worrying about perfect shapes. You know, we see these perfect little diamonds in the halter. Definitely not doing that. <laughs> It's just kind of looking like blobs side by side. But when you stand back, you're still gonna get the essence of it. It's gonna be amazing. You'll be so glad that you tried. And if your paint is catching on the surface of the paper, just dip it gently in the water without removing all the paint from your brush. And that will loosen it up. Introduce some more water to your paint. Don't soak your brush. You don't wanna be completely out of control here. But yeah, so there's this yellow and red on this side. And this red piece here and that turns into blue so just take note of where all your colors are located just do your best and then we've got little bits of red coming down you can just kind of use a quick little brush stroke to indicate that nothing too detailed and I think that's pretty much it for a red so before I do the blue I need to kind of add this dark black shape that's underneath the halter here so I'm going to take that mix that I made up for my shadow tone in my blue and leaving some gaps for where I wanna put the blue paint. I'm just gonna paint these, this blobby black thing that's under the halter. I don't know what that is. I don't know, but it's there, so I'm gonna paint it. And I'm gonna leave out the little bit that's coming out underneath this. Just make it more of a smooth shape, I think. Remember, you can modify. You get to do that. Towards the back of the head, while I have that dark on my brush, I'm gonna add some more of that dark color to the ear. And it's probably driving you nuts that I haven't painted his eye yet, huh? 
We'll get to that, don't worry. Okay, and then while I have that brown on my brush, I can also start to add some more shadows to the tassels. Try not to cover up all your pure yellow, but yeah, you do wanna you know, make it look more dimensional if possible. Add some more of the shapes, the tassels, some more up strokes and down strokes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next is blue. Once again, we'll take that ultramarine. And now we're going to get to complete the shape of the halter. If your red is dry, of course, make sure your red's completely dry before you jump in with this. And the yellow, of course. And we're trying to create clean shapes here. So painting all the in-betweens, between the yellow, between the red. And it looks like I missed something there, so I may have to come back with my yellow and red and finish that out. Or I could just make it that black again. No big deal. So we want to make it look like these three colors are twisted together. And I left that little gap for my blue, just so that it looks more pure when I lay it down. It wouldn't show up if I had just painted the black right over the top of everything. So for your colors to show up the best, they should be painted directly on the white of your paper. And that might mean negative painting around the whites first to leave room for those pure colors. While I have the blue, I can go ahead and add those green tassel ties, tassel ties here. And I have the blue in my brush, it's, but it's looking like green because we're painting it over yellow. So I actually grabbed my cool blue. I think that's a phthalo blue which works really great with your yellow to create a beautiful green. And then let's take a little bit more red and paint in this part of the braided area. I'm just gonna fill it all in, why not? Okay, so while I have some brown on my brush, I'm grabbing some from my palette, some of that brown that I mixed up earlier, I'm gonna just paint this little loop, I'm trying to leave a highlight so that it looks like shiny metal connects to the bottom of this piece of fabric and then there's like a center line and I'm just kind of using a dash line I don't want to make it too perfect you can add a little bit of texture to the halter kind of this light cross grain all right last but not least we get to paint the eye this to me is the icing on the cake I don't have black on my palette so I'm going to need to mix it up and so for that I'm going to take this very dark brown and mix it with my ultramarine you can make a pretty convincing black using burnt sienna and ultramarine and so this is just a version or variation of that. So with my black, I'll just go ahead and paint the eye shape. I do want to avoid some highlights, little bits of hair overlapping the eye, little highlight in the inside of the eye. And there's usually like a little ring of light under the eye, kind of the moisture. So watch out for that, but don't make it too bright. I start by avoiding it, painting around it, and right now it's a little too light. I will go back and darken that, but first I'm just gonna kind of blend the eye into the eye socket by adding some fur texture. And we need to add a little bit more shape here. We didn't really do any finishing details to this portion of the head. So darkening around the eye and under the eye with some of my brown, using a loose blobby motion with my brush, nothing too detailed, but be aware of how dark the paint is on your brush. You don't want it to be too dark. You're kind of just glazing over the top of what you've already got on your paper. Building up those layers to make it look more like a convincing eye shape. And then I'm going to go over the top of those highlights just ever so lightly without completely losing them. All right, if you want, feel free to add any additional background washes. I would actually use a bigger brush for this. It's a little bit easier and my water is super dirty but you know when you're working outside you may end up having to just deal with dirty water but in this case I am going to swap it out because I can for some clean water and I'm going to grab some of that ultramarine that's still in my palette and just do some light blobs of color suggesting the sky behind our camel this is a playground you get to do whatever you want here in the background just have fun if you're feeling playful, you could even add some spatter. I'm just gonna blue that up even more. There we go. 
Inspired by Morocco, our finished camel. I hope you enjoyed our little tutorial painting a camel together inspired by Morocco. And I hope you'll join me in Morocco, October 2024. It's going to be a blast. We're going to do lots more things like this, but a lot more in depth. We'll have plenty of opportunities to take photos, to explore, and paint our vacation. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you in the next video.